Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to continue on with our terrain building. Uh, what I'm doing now is, in today's video, we're going to be working on my coastline. Okay, so we've got a couple of pieces of, or a couple of supplies that you'll need. First of all, I got this rubber, which is actually advertised as neoprene. Uh, it's a neoprene type rubber. Okay. I wonder if these are both new. They both feel new. Nope, that one's open. Okay, so he's not new. This is brand new. Yep, not opened. So I personally use something called Alex. It's, it's an Alex Fast Dry. Uh, that's basically an acrylic latex. Uh, it's Fast Dry Acrylic Latex Caulk plus silicon, okay? So, uh, basically, it's extreme, well, first of all, it's crack resistant. It is flexible, or should be flexible. So, when I put it onto this rubber, and I roll this rubber up, or if I fold it, or something like that, um, that should go with it, you know? Okay, so I'm cleaning this off. This is a three foot piece. Um, I bought uh, a three by one and I took my hobby knife and I cut it at, in, with a wave, uh, but at an angle, right? So I, it, gave, it gave me a, a beveled edge. And I made sure that I cut it down to less than four base widths and these base widths are important for a game that I'm playing Meg uh, which is Mortem at Glorium which uh, is a medieval fantasy uh, not fantasy medieval uh, ancients war game and one base width is 40 millimeters and uh, everything is measured in base widths. Um, I, I've seen some other games out there like uh, DBX or uh, Laguerre. Uh, these, these games use base widths, but they don't call it base widths. They call it movement units or unit distances or something like that but it's basically a base width so i don't know why you wouldn't call it a base width well meg the game i'm playing mortimate glorium does call it base widths okay so the first thing another thing i want to do is i take a wire brush now this isn't really wire this is not a metallic wire this is uh like a really stiff plastic wire but metal wire will work just fine. Actually, it would probably be preferred. What I'm going to do, because I'm putting latex over this entire thing, I want to scratch the rubber up. Okay, so I don't know if you could see this, but basically think of it like I'm cleaning the rubber. But really, it's, it's applying a, a very thin or subtle or shallow scratches throughout the rubber. What that's going to do is it's going to give the latex something to grip onto on this rubber. And personally, I like to go at it at Two different angles or sometimes even more just to give you a little bit more to grip onto. So 
sometimes lengthwise, sometimes horizontal. Trying to make sure I get to the I get to the edge. So there'll be no peeling on the edge. All right, now before I get to laying the Alex, I want to make sure I've got, uh, I mean, I could do it right here on this and not have any kind of problem. I could probably even do at an angle like that so that it will stay on this board, this uh, floor mat. But either way, However I do it, I want to make sure I've got some wax paper beneath it. There we go. So now when I lay out my Alex, if, it, if I go over the edge, I won't be all over the place. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get some water. Now I didn't need to get a whole giant bowl of water but basically what this is for it's for my applicator when I put my finger in there and I start rubbing the Alex it will smooth it out and make it um, so it doesn't stick to my finger the the ends and the backside is going to be the table edge so this will be the uh, ends of the table and this would be one, the left or right side of the table. Uh, this side is the inland side of the coast. Now I don't know how much I'm going to need. I'm going to right about where that first line is is going to be the high ground. I'm going to make a berm, a, a levee, a, a dike, or whatever you call it. And then I'm going to slope it down to both sides. And then that side is going to be green grass. And then this side will be a sandy beach. Okay, it looks like I'm probably going to need quite a bit more. Now you got to kind of work in a little bit of a hurry. Because this Alex has like a 20 minute dry time. It says paint in 20 minutes. I usually give it a lot longer to dry than that. Because even if it has a 20 minute dry time, it feels like that's more of a dry to the touch. Um, because I've spray painted the Alex in 20 minutes. And the spray paint basically seals it together and then it never dries completely. So I don't plan to spray, I do plan to spray this. So I want to make sure that everything is completely 100% dry. Okay, much better, much better. I'm starting to think I do need to add a little bit more. Now, I have another type of caulk that I use for terrain and stuff like that. 
but I only use that when the base is rigid. When the base is flexible, I, I need to use the acrylic latex with silicone. Uh, you might have seen the dry decks caulk that I use. Um, yeah, I don't use that when you're trying to go flexible because that dries hard and it'll crack. I'm not sure how well the rubber will actually hold a spray paint, right? Because I'm going to spray this blue for the ocean. And I don't want I don't want uh, there to be a problem with the paint adhering to the rubber. That's why I'm doing the dry deck or the uh, Alex all the way to the edge. And the hill is going to be subtle. It's not going to be like an inch or two inches. It's just going to be barely a couple of millimeters, if that. Just enough so that you can tell that it's a slope. That's all it is. Now on this side, I, I don't think I'm going to need to worry about it as much because I'm going to be adding texture uh, paste to this side. But I'm going to go all the way up to the edge just, just to be sure. Not necessarily worrying about the slope is what I'm trying to say. And of course, I'm going to harp on this every time I do terrain. You don't want it to be perfect. You want it to have imperfections. Because the imperfections will make it look a little bit more natural and less manicured. Okay. Once I get it generally the thickness that I want it, then we're going to go up and smooth everything up. Okay, that hill looks really good and then it stops looking really good right in the middle. Got to do a little work. <laughs> okay, so it's basically in three sides. We've got the grass on the side of the hill. And then we're going to have sand right here. And then we're going to have water right here. And then once it dries, which might be tomorrow, uh, then we'll spray paint it and start adding texture and stuff like that. So what I plan to do is push this off to the side to let it dry. All right, so stay tuned on the video and I will come back with the second part. All right, guys, uh, this is dry enough that I can pick it up, I can move it, I can handle it without it sticking to my fingers and all that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this Krylon Cover Max Paint and Primer. It's a gloss true blue. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it along the bottom third, right, where this is where the water is going to be. Uh, but I'm going to use texture paste to cover the sand for the beaches and uh, the, the grass is going to be like a darker brown. Uh, <clears throat> And so that'll blend in with the blue for the water. 
And then once that's all dry, then I'll actually use a, uh, a water paste to give myself a nice shiny water finish. All right, but before we do any of that, let me take this outside. I'll prime it. Uh, I'm going to let it dry outside. It says, it says it dries in 10 minutes or less. Okay, so th I'll be right back in uh, and we'll be working on the rest of this. All right, I'll see you in just a second. All right, so you can see how good it looks already. I just need to uh, texture this and then I'm going to texture that and then we're going to texture this and that. Now, I'm going to be using uh, this desert sand for the beach areas. I'm going to be using water texture for the transparent water. Uh, but we're going to start off by doing the dark earth on the back slope and a little bit of the, well, over the hill and then a little bit on the inside slope. Now, I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this uh, crown and cover master uh, but having read the packaging it actually says it can be used on fabric and so uh, fabric being flexible I figured it would it also says that it is um, durable so that's telling me that it's not going to crack or chip um, and the fact that it can be used on fabric is telling me that um, it's not going to, I mean, it's going to be flexible for my, my rubber. Remember, this is going to be done in thirds, right? So we're going to have a third dark brown, a third sand, and a third water. Approximately. Not exactly. But I want to make sure that I get all the hill. Okay. And the beveled edge of the rubber. That looks outstanding. Okay. So let me clean my brush. And then we'll come back and probably do some sand. All right, now we're going to do some sand. We're going to make a beach. There we go. We're going to be able to do some beach, some beach action. Okay. I know it says desert sand, but sand is sand. And I don't want to do straight lines. I mean, we'll get it on straight probably. And then I'll go through and touch it up with some with some brush work. And the coastline doesn't have to be straight it doesn't have to follow any kind of specificity I'm kind of using the 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 thick part as a guide for how deep I go with the sand 
but on the water side I don't really know how how far out I want to go now when I do the water am I going to go partially up the sand um, to make it look like the water like the sand goes into the water I was thinking I am going to do that. So if I am going to do that, I need a little bit more sand uh, I need a little bit more beach if I'm going to bring the water up onto the sand. If that makes good sense yeah and I don't think the sand should be too uh, I think it the uh, the edge should be fairly wavy and smooth and less jagged see like that's too jagged I don't know if you can see it um, on camera. I don't really have it focused um, or zoomed in, I should say. I have it positioned so that you can see the whole thing at one time. I think. I think that's what I got. Okay, so now I'm dabbing it to get rid of the brush lines. But I guess horizontal brush lines would be okay because that would simulate the waves and the tide. making making lines okay now I am making it fairly jagged at the top and this is the part that's going to have grass on it Look at that, it's a flag. Anybody know um, what flag is blue, tan, and brown? If you know that flag, put it in the comments. Okay, so that's the end of the sand. And it's going to be water texture. Mm, no, it's not. I think I'm going to do grass and then do the water texture last. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do the grass and I'm going to clean the grass off and make sure it's dry before I do the water texture. Because if I do the water texture and it's got any kind of stickiness to it, when I do the grass, I could easily get grass in the water and then it would ruin the water. So I got to do the grass first and make sure it's completely dry before we do the water. All right, so but let me clean my brush and then we'll and let this dry and then we'll be back to do some grass. Alright guys, we are getting ready to put the grass texture on the brown. I have a feeling that the sand is not 100% dry, but that's okay because I don't mind if some of the grass 
makes it onto the sand, it it will be um, it'll be okay. It'll be um, a happy accident. Okay, so I'm basically only going to do a little section at a time like this, and then I'm going to slide this box down so that we can do more um, we could do. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and then we'll do the center last. This is my uh, normal grass stone uh, selection. And I have uh, refilled my Elmer's. So it might have too much water in it. It also might not have enough water in it. So, oh yeah. This has got uh, too much water. I have a feeling all I need to do is shake it up better. All right. Now, using my brush. See how that got on the sand? That's perfectly fine. Now, as you can kind of see here, I'm not doing a 100% coverage. Okay. And now what we'll do is we'll just kind of sprinkle it on a little heavy, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to let that sit while we do the side. <clears throat> I'm using my thumb or forefinger, I guess, in this case, because I can't get an angle for my thumb. I'm going to press down a little bit on this grass stone uh, sprinkle. I'm going to make sure that it presses into whatever glue is there. Same thing on this side. This box is not flat. Okay. Let's see if I can successfully shake this out. Without making a mess, you know. Okay, so it needs to sit and the Elmer's needs to dry um, 
yeah, the Elmer's needs to dry. And then I'm going to come back and clean up everything. Uh, but before the Elmer's dries, I'm going to see if I can't shake off the majority of the middle one. Okay. So now we're just going to let it dry. Alright, so now I'm just going to try to brush off the loose grass. Anything that didn't stick Now I'm not trying to drag it. I'm using a very soft makeup brush. And then we're going to try that over here. Unfortunately, I don't have a three foot box. If I did, that would be great. Once I get the majority of it off, then I can clean my boxes out and do this a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to take this and set it down gently. And then I'm going to take everything from these boxes and put them back in this tub. One more time. This time while it's laying on its on the ground and I'm not only brushing off this but I'm also cleaning the water and one of the reasons is because I'm about to add the water texture Okay, we got the coastline laid out on some wax paper so that uh, I won't get any spillage or if I do get some spillage it'll be it won't be so damaging. goes on white and dries clear just like you know Elmer's glue or whatever it's very thick so it doesn't run it's not a it's not a liquid like woodland scenics it's not a resin it's an acrylic so it's going to be flexible once dry well, I guess it's flexible before it dries too. <laughs> That's me just being silly. Okay, um, let's try not to have little pieces of terrain or whatever. Clumps of whatever in there. If it has some imperfections that's okay but I need to cover the entire thing before I start giving it waves and stuff like that and again remember um, I'm not stopping 
right at the edge of the sand. I'm going to go up on the sand, probably a good half an inch. To make it look like the sand is underwater. Okay, now this water texture dries pretty, pretty quick, but not, not 20 minutes, not 30 minutes, you know, um, it'll dry to the touch in maybe an hour or two, but, uh, It'll still be kind of a white milky color. You got to give it, you know, 24 hours, sometimes longer for it to fully dry. Okay, so let's get up on the sand now. And I've seen where they recommend give it about 30 minutes to an hour to start to harden or start to dry and then come back in and uh, add waves. You know, because at that point it'll be a little bit stiffer. I don't know if I'm going to add any waves. This is a this is kind of an experiment for me at this end. I put the grass fairly close to the beach or the coast and I knew I was going to put the water texture on top of it. I just want to see what that's going to look like. Now I'm trying to be very gentle with my brush strokes so I don't actual so you don't actually see brush strokes in the water and I'm trying to cover up all the blue to make the water deeper you know I want it to be all white But if it's not completely all white, that's fine. And I'm also doing a, a parallel brush stroke so that um, it would represent ripples or, or waves. Let's get up on the beach a little bit stronger. Now, as you can see, I made like this perfectly straight line. 
this just makes it look like it's super rough waters and it doesn't have to be rough waters close to the beach sure it can be it can be rough close to the beach or in certain areas but the majority of it should just be brush strokes very light light brush strokes that you can barely see okay I think I'm satisfied with the feel of it right now trying to give the water a little bit less of a straight look give it some depth like it's gone up the beach a little bit okay so we're gonna let that dry um, I might not be back till tomorrow because it does take a good amount of time for this to dry let me clean my brush and then I'll be back and I'll kind of show a little close-up so you can see the texture of the water all right hopefully I've got the focus set so you can kind of see how the water texture is all white you know but close to the beach we've got it kind of I added a little bit of wave action and you can see it's already starting to dry because uh, it was completely white when I just applied it just five minutes ago and that's the grassy water thing that I was talking about so we're gonna let uh, that dry you know and hopefully it'll look like a good looking coast and there's the grassy section you know and then there's the sand beachy section so and then hopefully it'll roll up without any problem all right that's the coast and when it dries we'll come back and take a good look at it i'll see you tomorrow all right guys uh it is the next day uh everything should be dry everything seems to be dry to the touch um yeah so let's go ahead and peel this off these all right so this is what it would look like on the table now of course you're going to uh, position it all the way to one side of your battlefield where it would be the coast you know where it would be up against the edge of the uh, the side of the table and then you would have uh, in my opinion, I would say that this is playable, you know, and then this is the coast. But it's up to the players to decide if this entire piece here is not playable or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, so what do you think? Um, <clears throat> now, I thought about rolling it up, you know, like this. And storing it like this but I have a I have a feeling that the water texture 
will eventually stick to the rubber. You know, just over time. So, uh, now I also considered rolling it up the other way. So it's kind of a counter roll, right? You roll it up on this side. And then when you unroll it, it basically will have a counter roll so that when you lay it down, that roll would make it lay flat on the table. But in both cases, I think uh, I don't want to roll it up. Um, how's, I don't want it to roll up against itself because I'm afraid that the water texture will is, you know, a month from now. I might not use it for a month. I might not use it for two or three months, and over time, the water texture will stick to itself so I've decided that I'm going to put out some a clean piece of wax paper and roll it up in the wax paper there we go. I'm only going to go halfway across but then I'm going to split it in half because it only needs to cover this much. Just like that. Okay, so everything should be protected, and then what I normally would do is just is just grab a couple of rubber bands, for easy storage, and then you can store this wherever you want. I first saw it. I'm going to store it in the tub. Alright guys, thanks for coming out and watching the construction of this coastline. You can make rivers and roads using the same type of rubber uh, acrylic latex texture paste elmer's glue uh, and uh, and flock you know so you could do all different kinds of things all right i will catch you in the next video